Hi everyone. In this series of videos, we're looking at how to use the Avada design elements. In this video, we are looking at the OpenStreetMap element. OpenStreetMaps are an open source alternative to Google Maps, and our element comes with a bundle of options for how you can display them on your site. Let's check it out. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Okay, let's begin. I've imported the Accountant pre-built website here, and on the About page, I'm going to imagine Avada Accountants has expanded somewhat and opened some new branches. So for this video, I'm going to replace these individual Google Maps with a single OpenStreetMaps element, showing all locations. Okay, so in Avada Live, I've added some new locations and removed the Google Map elements, and I've made a new container below that for my OpenStreetMap element. So let's just add our element in. It loads on the page, and we can see it is a parent-child element, with the individual markers, or locations, the children. So with this element you can have as many locations as you want on the one map. There's also a General, Design and Extras tab, but to start off let's add our locations. So I'll just edit the existing item here. Ok, the first option is a title. This is used in conjunction with the marker on the map, so let's call this Melville NY. Now for the location. OpenStreetMaps work primarily on latitude and longitude, but we have also added an address lookup to the element. It's always going to be most accurate with precise coordinates, of course. In our case, we're not working with real locations, so I'll just add my title info into the address lookup field and search. That finds an approximate location, and adds the latitude and longitude into the fields below. While an item is active like it is now, you can also drag it around the screen to reposition it. Ok, the next option is content. So let's add some content here. This field is just meant for an address, and is not meant to take complex content like other Avada elements etc, but it can take simple HTML. I'll just add an address and a contact link. If I just click on the marker on the map, we can see the info there. Ok, marker icon is next. In many instances of this element there's only going to be one location, so it's not surprising to find this here in the child tab rather than in the parent one. For my situation, I want the same marker for all, but I'm just going to be duplicating my items so the marker will carry through anyway. So I think for this I will pick an asterisk, like the icon in the logo. The last option on the child general tab is called pop-up display type. There is a parent option for this one as well, so I will leave this on default and set that there. But if you wanted, each marker could have a different pop-up display type. There's also a design tab here. Here you can control the icon size and colours, and there's also a border radius option if you wanted to manipulate the shape of the icon background. The icon colours come from the global defaults of the icon element, but you can of course set them here to whatever you want. I'll stick with my defaults. Ok, so there's one marker. I'll just add my other seven, and then I will come back and style the map as a whole. Ok, I've set all my locations as individual items, but we can't see them on the map at this point. Let's move to the General tab to style this map. The first option is Map Style. Here you can select from a wide range of map styles. If I just open the description, we can see that the default is set to OSM Carto on this site. But if I click the cog, it takes me to the global options for this element, and we can set the default here. Also, this is where you would add your Mapbox Access token. This is required for any of the Mapbox styles. There's a link in the description for more information on how to get that token. Ok, I've added my token and saved and reloaded, so now I should be able to access all the map styles as well. But before we look at these first two options, I think I will set the other options first. For example, I want a bigger map here. I might edit the container, and make the interior content width to be 100%. Ok, that's going to be better. I'll come back to the element, and now on the General tab, I'll set the dimensions of the map. The description tells me the limitations of this, so for my example, I'll set the width to 100%, and the height to 800 pixels. And now the zoom level. For a single address, you probably want it zoomed right into 14 or more, but for this map, I'm going to zoom out to level 5. Yeah, that's starting to look better. Under the zoom level, there are a whole set of controls for zooming and dragging, etc. Again, in certain situations, you might want some or all of these left on. But here, I think I will turn them all off so I have a big overview map that is static for the user. 
The next option is pop-up display type. It's set to pop-up which opens on a click on any marker like this. But there are four other options as well, including tooltip, static with close, static without close, and none. For this example, I think I'll go with tooltip. That way, when I mouse over the markers, the info box pops up. Okay, the last few options are an element visibility option to control whether the element is visible on different screen sizes, and the ubiquitous CSS class and CSS ID options. So now let's go back to the top of this tab and have a look at the first two options. There are almost 20 different map styles to choose from, but just be aware that the map box ones, like Google Maps, can have a cost associated with them. I don't mind the default map style here, but let's look at a few of the others. Stamen Toner is pretty dramatic, and Stamen Watercolor is beautiful, but perhaps not so appropriate here. The map box Navigation Night also looks very cool, but I think for this site, I'll just stick with the default. Okay, the other option on this tab we haven't discussed is the Map Type option. Currently it's on Marker, and the other two options are Polyline, which draws a line between markers, and Polygon, which connects the lines and adds a semi-transparent background to the intersection. With these two options, there's also a Center on Markers option to set the map's view to show all markers. But these two aren't that useful in my situation, so I'm going to set the Map Type back to Marker. OK, let's move on to the Design tab. Here there's a range of options to control the markers and the pop-up content. There are five styles of marker animation, as well as typography options for both the pop-up title and pop-up content. So you can style these however you want. There are also options for pop-up background and close button color, and padding and margin options as well. For this map, I think I will set my markers to pulsating. For my title typography, I will apply the Subheadings Global Typography set and just adjust the margins to 0 pixels top and 20 pixels bottom margin. For the pop-up content typography, I'll apply the Lead Global set and set the font color to color 7. And for the pop-up background color, I'll set that to color 1, but I'll set a 50% transparency via the Alpha channel on the global color options. OK, yeah, that looks good. OK, the last tab with this element is the Extras tab, and that just has the usual animation options for the element, but I don't think I will animate this one. Let's just save this work, and go have a look at the map on the front end. I'll just scroll down to the Offices section. Yeah, here it is, and yeah, that looks great. I think that's a big step up from what was there before. OK, that's the Open Street Maps element. Thanks for watching, and share with us how you've used the element on your site. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the OpenStreetMaps element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.